Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph a, a inequality. So when we're solving an inequality, we're going to have a solution that's going to have one or more than one solution point, or a point that's going to be a part of the solution. We're not just going to have one value like x equals 5 or so forth. So we're going to have multiple points. So to represent all of the solutions, we're going to use a graph. And when we're solving one variable inequalities, we are going to use a line graph to be able to identify our solution. Now, there's a couple things that's important for us to understand with the inequality symbols. First of all, we need to understand what exactly inequality symbol says. So I'm going to say these out loud, um, and then I'll kind of describe again the parts of them. This says x is less than or equal to 7. This is x is less than negative 2 x is greater than negative 11, and x is greater than or equal to 0. So notice I said greater, to, greater than or, or equal to, and less than or equal to when we had this bar under our inequality symbol. So what that means is that point, 7 and 0, those points are going to be a part of our solution. Because when you know, it's 0 is greater than or equal to 0, that is true, right? So it's going to be a part of our solution. So that is what we call a, we're going to have a closed point. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. All right, so when we have less than or greater than or equal to, the value that we solve for is going to be a part of our solution. When we just have less than or greater than, the value is not a part of our solution. Because let's pretend we had negative 2 here. Is negative 2 less than negative 2? No, less, negative 2 is equal to negative 2. All right? So therefore, it's what we call an open. It's not a part of our solution. All right, so I, understanding if it's open or closed is very, very important. A lot of students get it mixed up. And it really is just based on using your, what the inequality symbol is. And what we can also test, use, it, uh, we can also determine that by testing. Now, the next part is so let's say we have all these solutions and we identify if it's going to be a closed or an open point. What I like to do is when we're creating our number line, a lot of students have the misconception of always wanting to create the number line at zero and going positive numbers to the right and positive numbers to the left. I don't like to do that. I mean, obviously, when you're doing compound inequalities, I'm going to kind of like move down for each one. When you're doing compound inequalities, it gets a little difficult because you have to include you know, two or more variables, but, or I mean, two or more values. But a lot of times, I like to just deal with the point that I chose right in the center. And you know, if you're using like a standardized test or a test from your teacher, they might not always have that point right exactly in the middle. Um, maybe they'll do like, uh, maybe they'll have like, um, I don't know, uh, negative, you know, uh, whatever. I'm not even gonna do that. But a lot of times they'll have it in there. But the, they usually will have that value on that line that you can go ahead and graph. So therefore, to the right is always going to be positive numbers, and to the left is going to be um, less numbers or negative numbers, depending on where you kind of start. So to get smaller, or smaller and larger, right? So smaller, then larger. And you guys can see this, is all, depend this all changes on where, where exactly my number line is. We don't need to always create it with 0 in the middle, because if you're going to go up to like 11, that's a lot of tick marks, right? So I like to start wherever I want to. Um, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Then, so I've identified the closed point. I've created my number line. Or if I have a number line created, the next thing I do is I put my point in, right, in each, each of my starting points. Okay. Now, there's a couple two different ways. And I'm going to do this uh, first two ways. I'm going to use test points. All right? And when using test points, what you're going to do is pick a point to the left and pick a point to the right. And you're going to evaluate your inequality for both of those points. So I'm going to say 5 is less than or equal to 7, and 9 is less than or equal to 9. And then wherever my point is true, that's where I'm going to shade. Well, no, it's <laughs> 7. 9 is less than or equal to 7. 5 is obviously less than 7, so you can say that's true. And 9 is obviously not less than 7, so that is false. Therefore, we shade towards my true. And again, if you're not sure about the closed or open point, evaluate your point. Is 7 less than or equal to 7? Yes, that's true, so that's why that's shaded in. Let's do the same over here. I'll pick negative 4, so evaluate negative 4 is less than or equal to, I'm sorry, less than negative 2. And I'll pick 0. Is 0 less than negative 2? So again, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that negative 4 is obviously less than negative 4, so that's true. That's false. So we're going to shade to our left. And we don't shade to right. And then you can even evaluate your point. Is negative 2 less than negative 2, which we already determined was false. So that's kind of like your 
for sure method of graphing. I also think that once you kind of get used to this, a lot of times you can just say what the inequality is out loud. So I can say x is greater than negative 11. What are the numbers that are greater than negative 11? Well, that's obviously going to be the numbers that are going towards my positive, which will be in that direction. And since it's greater than, not greater than, equal to, that will remain open. And then here, x is greater than or equal to 0. Obviously, again, that has to be in the same direction of positive numbers. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a quick overview video of how you graph inequalities. Thanks.